SVG's Jason Dackman here, and it's officially hockey season. The NHL has already dropped the puck in Prague, and we are getting our share of action on the ice here in North America. Starting on Tuesday, we are here with Linda Schulz, coordinating producer of the NHL on ESPN. Linda, thanks so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Uh, absolutely. And uh, just mind the audio as I'm I'm standing in the middle of us actually setting up for tomorrow night's festivities. I love it. So, yeah, what do you guys have in store? Let's start uh, real quick. Just a little teaser. Utah, it's a brand new team. It's a brand new market. It's very exciting. Um, how are you guys trying to blow it out uh, for opening night? Uh, quite simply, all our coverage for our triple header is going to come from right here in Utah. Our Right behind me is our stage, which is going to have um, Steve Levy, PK, uh, Subban, and Mark Messier. Um, this is an outdoor set uh, in front of Delta Center where they just installed, if you can see, they just put in a new giant hockey puck over my shoulder. Yeah. Um, right. And uh, then as soon as doors open, we'll bring that set inside. So we actually have two sets here. Um just to really embrace uh, hockey in Utah. Very exciting. Well, we can't wait to check it out. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, cool toys, uh, you guys have had a little bit of fun with the Mindfly body cam. We saw some of it in the Stanley Cup final. We've seen it on some other ESPN properties. Are we yeah. going to see more of that really cool POV angle this year on hockey coverage? Yeah, so uh, Utah Hockey, T hockey Club has uh, agreed to um, have their backup goalie put on the vest. It is a vest that is great um, in terms of video quality. That's one of the things that drew us at ESPN to this particular technology. Obviously, we've seen a lot of POVs, but this one, the, the quality of the video is really strong. But um, the other part of that is it's not just a POV cam video wise. It's, it's got strong quality audio as well. So what we're looking to do is um, uh, head over to Morning Skate, which they have at the uh, Olympic Oval tomorrow morning. Uh, their backup goalie will will put that vest on. And uh, Leah Hextall, our reporter here on site, is going to do an interview with them uh, with with the, the player on ice. Additionally, we're going to try and make this happen for the warm-up skate as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, I mentioned that our studio team is going to move inside for uh, the, the Utah coverage. And from set, they will be uh, having an interview during warm-up skate with the Mindfly camera. Awesome. All right. Well, very cool. And, and again, it's been a really interesting tool in the tool, but tool belt, uh, you know, yeah. ESPN properties, but especially for NHL and hockey coverage, it's been very cool. Um, you know, you, you guys, ESPN tends to really throw the kitchen sink at, at a lot of your coverage. Are we going to see a lot of the other, uh, you know, high end elements that we've seen in the past in terms of, you know, jibs and shallow depths of field and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. We will have a Ronin. It's going to be an RF Ronin here in Utah, uh, the purpose of which is certainly to get the outdoor and indoor coverage. Um, so so we'll use it as the um, Utah hockey players take the blue carpet um, and walk into the building for their, their first true game tomorrow afternoon. And once we get inside that Ronin, will be we'll take to the ice and that'll be a skate cam as well you know we'll we'll have the the obvious with a 27 foot jib out here on the plaza um and then then inside again that that skate cam is a pretty strong piece of our opening ceremony coverage yeah and again it's become a staple of ESPN's NHL coverage it's been very cool to see um so also you know want to get into what what are you most excited about this year obviously right now all eyes on Utah, all eyes on opening night, but oh my goodness, we still got 81 <laughs> games left after that. So what, uh, what's getting your blood boiling from a production perspective for this season? Yeah, it's funny because we've been working so hard with opening night and we're so excited for our triple header. But the fact is, you're right. Uh, come Thursday, there's, a, there's two more hockey games that, that hit our air. So um, uh, I think the things that stand out to me the most is October 22nd, we have Frozen Frenzy. That's something we did last year uh, that that we thought was really successful and just a lot of fun. 
So um, with that, we, we bounce around in 16 games and we work with the NHL to create that moment, right? Like to have all those games and have the, the um, staggered puck drop time so that we can have a lot of content. Um, that's tw- October 27th. That's really soon, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so right. like we do, as soon as we get uh, to past opening night, we're digging in there because that takes a lot and that'll be hosted from our um, Bristol campuses. Cool. Um, once we get past that, we are really looking to educate the fans on what Four Nations is. That's going to be a really big opportunity. I mean, we've seen um, uh, in-season tournament style with the NBA and and where that went. And and we are very excited that the league has decided to um, bring in four nations. I mean, when when people ask me what it is, it's sort of like World Cup of Hockey meets that NBA style in-season tournament, right? I'll put, yeah. Um, so that's in Montreal and then in Boston for the championship, which we have. Um, the good thing about that is it's an opportunity. You brought up Mindfly. It's an opportunity to try some access. Mm-hmm. Um, we expect that there might be some opportunity to use Mindfly in-game or or something to the effect. Right. Sure. Yeah, but again, for you know the the four nations format is going to be exciting. But just like you said, uh, the, with the with the NBA in season tournament, it it certainly allowed for more access, and and uh, we hope to see that uh, you know with you guys, it should be very cool. Um, wanted to close out with a, a, a fun question asking about how everything has mm-hmm. evolved. You know, when ESPN first got the NHL back, uh, believe me, everybody was so excited. I still remember I got this button right here. Oh, and nice. It had the, uh, it had the, the, <laughs> the, the, the theme on it and everything. Yeah. Oh, it's out of batteries. <laughs> anyway. Um, but everybody was super excited about it since then. Obviously you guys have, you know, uh, it, it's become, it's not an, it's not a new novelty by any means. The, the NHL and ESPN is, is a core asset and has been for several years from a production and creative standpoint. How has it evolved over the last few years and how are you continuing to look to grow it as we move forward? You know, we, we were just talking about access, Jason, right? And the fact is that um, when you're partnering with a league, it, it takes some time to build that relationship. Certainly we were coming back to hockey, but that was a generation ago, right? So um, reestablishing that relationship and that trust to to get the access that we're really looking to do. Um, fact is that hockey is a challenging sport to cover. It is a small puck and to make it more accessible to the fan, we're constantly looking at opportunities to um, slow the game down mm-hmm. while also showing the speed and the strength of a hit we had the opportunity to to talk to some players preseason. And one of the things that they mentioned was that they wished fans had an understanding of how hard the hits were and how fast they skate. Their athleticism is like no other sport that I've covered and I've covered them all. So, um, so how are we going to do that? We've talked about POVs. We, we continue to develop, develop, um, where and how we place microphones to get the the sound of the hit, et cetera. Um, we continue to look at opportunities with um, with robotic cameras on the glass. And I, I think that's something that we'll look into further. Again, now that we're on our fourth year and now that the NHL is more comfortable with where we're exploring, right? Sure. Um the, the other thing we're looking at is um, alternate feeds. And so when you think about uh, our ESPN Plus games, that's 50 of our games that are exclusive. Um, one thing we're exploring is the op- opportunity to do a puck trail. So when you're looking on your phone mm-hmm. or on a device as opposed to your giant TV, right? Um, how can we make it easier for uh, a fan to follow the action? Very cool. All right. So the glowing puck is back is what you're saying. 
Uh, it is not the glowing <laughs> puck. Don't say those words. No, of course not. But the idea of watching on your mobile device, uh, look, hockey's the hardest sport to watch on a phone. It is. Like, there's no question about it. It so, is. Uh, a, a puck trail is certainly something that, that we're excited to, to hopefully see on some of those exclusive games. Uh, Linda, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're in back-to-back meetings uh, out there in Utah and have so much on your plate, so we can't tell you how much we appreciate you taking the time. Great luck on opening night. Thank and you. the rest of the season. Yeah, appreciate it. For more on the NHL opening night, stay tuned to sportsvideo.org, SVG Play, and the SVG YouTube channel.